Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to the special forum today. Our focus today will be on updating the campus, both the employee group and students who are here in attendance, and those of you in the North County, um, on where we are in terms of our work towards compliance and reaffirmation for Cuesta College. Uh, some of you will have heard some of what I'm going to talk about briefly here, and then we'll be focusing most, mostly on what our recent, recent actions have been and what our uh, strategy is and timeline and game plan uh, for the work that's uh, currently happening and, and what will happen in the near future. So let me just drop back um, <clears throat> a couple of weeks. We haven't, uh, this has only been since February 6th that um, the latest uh, bullet hit the college and our college community. So as you recall, we received word from the commission office that we had been moved from probation to sanction as to uh, show cause as our uh, recent sanction. And that was uh, predicated on the fact that the commission uh, was concerned by our ability to um, construct, complete, and sustain our planning processes. And that uh, there is a timeline under the sanction process uh, which uh, we had surpassed. And so when colleges are, find themselves in those situations, then there are consequences to uh, the lack of ability to complete those those uh, requirements. So the show cause was an outcome of that evaluation of Cuesta College. Regardless of all the wonderful progress that this college has made uh, <clears throat> over the last three years in compliance to the 2008 comprehensive review, there's still some unfinished business that we have that is really crucial to this whole process. And that's where our focus is is now and will be over the next several months in the next year. Um, <clears throat> so following the receipt of that information, we began immediately a, um, a communication campaign um, to make sure that you were aware of what the situation was, what it meant, and what we were going to do about it. We also informed the media because that becomes a, a hugely important piece of our success and our reputation is how we're treated within the electronic and print media. Um, and so we held a press conference. It was well attended. And we've seen actually the outcome of, I think, a, a, a really good attempt by our media partners to help us through this process. They are going to report the news, but if you looked so far, They've done what I've asked them to do, and that's not to sensationalize this particular occurrence in our history in order to sell airtime or to sell print media. And we will continue to work with our media partners <clears throat> to help message our external community and our future students, whether they be community members or whether they be high school students right now who are trying to make decisions about where to spend their time in terms of pursuing their educational goals to be able to consider Cuesta College still the most viable choice and viable option for their success. And that will be a continued message that we will um, <clears throat> maintain and will continue to, to uh, instill within our, our uh, uh, community and our high school partners. And that work is, is going on now. I want to thank uh, Candy Munoz and our counseling department for their work with our high school counselors. I also want to thank the superintendents of the local districts who I've had an opportunity to work with who have pledged their support and their continued messaging. I also want to, you know, congratulate our, our business and economic community um, who have also informed me through their, um, our, our advisory committees, through our chambers, throughout the county that they believe in Cuesta College and they will do whatever they can to help us through this period of time. And I'm asking you, as employees and students of Cuesta College, if this is your college, this is your career, this is your profession, 
and it's incumbent upon all of us to make sure that we're doing our part, that we're learning our role as it relates to accreditation with the standards mean so that we can know that the efforts that we're making on a day-to-day -day basis are supporting the compliance issues that are set forth by the U.S. Department of Education. And that'll be part of the, the task at hand as we continue to develop our planning process is to be able to educate our campus community as to what the full intent of what the standards mean and why it is important that we maintain our compliance. So with that, uh, once we uh, went through that first 48 hours, 72 hours of, of, um, of challenging thoughts, um, and also the realization that when you're on show cause, we are required to develop a, a, clo a, a campus closure or institutional closure plan. And that was, to me, part of one of the most sobering uh, messages within that, because that's really the attention grabber. Say that when you're on show cause, you know, there is an ultimate outcome and possibility that accreditation would not be reaffirmed. And if it did, if it did happen, then there's a process that each institution has to go through in order to pre prepare for the, the dispensation of assets, student records, working with students in terms of, of continuing their plans and where they would relocate, whether or not the college would be subsumed under another college as a center or um, either permanently or temporarily, why the college regained its, its, um, its accreditation stature. That's, that's the part that didn't feel very good. But it's, it is what it is. It is what a requirement. We will comply with it. My office will be preparing that report. It's not a major document. It's just a very serious uh, document to, to deal with. Okay, so that's the technical aspects of it. So what we've done to date so far is <clears throat> I happen to have a, a very good friend who I respect very highly who's been um, somebody I've worked with for over 20 years. His name is Rocky Young. He's a former... Um, Chief Instructional Officer at Santa Monica City College. He became the president at L.A. Pierce. He eventually became the chancellor of the L.A. Community College Districts. And now he's a very, um, a very respected consultant, and he works with the California Brain Trust, which is a consulting firm that we've utilized before when we were writing our first strategic plan. And I called Rocky and said, Rocky, here's the situation. This is where we are. Who would you suggest that we work with? And without any hesitation, he gave me two names. He said John Nixon and Eva Conrad. And John Nixon, I've known for well, at least 15 years, and he just retired as the president of Mount San Antonio College in Walnut, and for, for the three previous years served as a commissioner on the ACCJC commission. So he has had firsthand experience of reviewing our case and our follow-up reports and the team reports from a commissioner standpoint. So he had a very, very clear perspective of where the gaps were and what was missing within our response to the commission or to the recommendations. Um, he also lives in Cambria now, which made it also nice and convenient. He also is now working for the commission. So he is an associate vice president for ACCJC. And so he was able to commit to and work with us and will continue to work with as a technical assistant in terms of helping us through this process. The second person that was recommended to me by Rocky was Eva Conrad. And I've known Eva now probably for 20 years in our relationship as common vice presidents. And then she was a vice president of instruction at uh, Moorpark College. Um, I think it started in 91, something like that and then became president of Moore Park College in 2002 and retired from that position in 2008. And she is now a consultant with the Brain Trust. And <clears throat> when it comes to planning, Eva Conrad you know, jumps off the pages when people talk about her ability to come and help colleges create their document that will work for them. She doesn't come in and hand us a blueprint and say, this is what you need to do. She, she is a facilitator. She's a very expert facilitator that has been working with us 
over the last three days to help us draft a beginning uh, comprehensive planning document. And, um, and I can speak probably for everyone who's connected with her over the last three days uh, that it is a wonderful experience to have the opportunity to work with uh, Dr. Conrad. And I'd just like to introduce Dr. Conrad, who's here today, and she'll be leaving at 1.30 to get back and through Santa Barbara before it gets too impacted with traffic. So, Eva, thank you for being here, and this is Eva Conrad. <clears throat> You're also aware of what I announced on February 10th, that I, I made a, a change in the responsibilities of the Accreditation Liaison Officer, and I reassigned that uh, duty to uh, Deb Wolf, our Dean of Science, Math, Nursing, and lots of other things. We have to shorten your title. Um, and she and uh, Kevin Bottenball, the Academic Senate President, uh, are co-chairing the Accreditation Steering Committee. Uh, which uh, is taking on a, a major role in terms of helping shape and to facilitate and orchestrate a campus-wide effort in terms of uh, meeting our obligations. In addition to that, um, as part of uh, Dr. Conrad's uh, suggestion is we've also developed a, uh, a kind of a brainstorming group, a group of uh, faculty and, and uh, admin who are really taking a look at stuff and getting in a room and just kind of thrashing out ideas that can feed into the, the uh, planning process that the steering committee is working with. She's also been working with Cabinet to make sure that Cabinet understands um, our responsibilities and our requirements as it comes to leading the way in terms of uh, requirements for planning. We've also had great um, cooperation from you Many of you individually and many of you collectively who have sent us emails, um, stopped us in the hallway and said, just let, let, let me know what you need and I'll be glad to help. And we've had committees who have a regular committee assignment say, we're going to drop whatever it is we're doing and tell us what we can do in order to take our paid time as for committee work and focus on something in accreditation. And I really want to thank those groups and those individuals who have stepped forward to say thank you for being willing to step forward and help us in this process. I also want to thank the students and the student leadership. You know, they have gone above and beyond, you know, my experience and my uh, experience of witnessing student groups over the last 45 years um, of really wanting to take a position and take an active role in making sure they understood the issues, they understood the consequences, so that they could articulate the message to their, um, their classmates and fellow students as to what this really meant. To try to minimize and <clears throat> try to downplay the fear factor, but not, not speak lightly of it, and not say this isn't serious, but this is a great college, and this will continue to be a great college, and what we do here, we do really well in terms of our teaching and learning processes and the services that we provide to students. And so I want to reassure students is that we will, never, we will never lose that focus because you are the reason for which we exist. And as long as I am president of this college, that will become a continual and uh, an ongoing focus of this institution. You know, I started my career as a teacher. I still am a teacher. I just teach a different group of people, and I teach in a different way. Um, and that's all how we all need to view our, our jobs and our roles, is that we have that direct impact on another human being who's trying to make the best of the opportunity to create a new and enriched life for themselves. So I want to thank you for joining me in that, that commitment. So that's kind of where we've been. That's kind of the context in which we find ourselves today. And by the nature of, of, of all of you who have shown up today, I know you take this equally as seriously as, as I do. Um, and, you know, we are filming this as we film all of our forums and posting it on our website off the front page. You just click on President's Forums, and you can, you can, you can guide your colleagues who can't be here today 
who, who want to see what happened or hear what happened, to go to that place is a constant resource. Or you can revisit it yourself because you may have forgotten something or it got a little cloudy and say, I want to refresh what I thought I heard that day so I can go back as a record of what really happened and not what you hear in the hallway. Okay. So authenticate the information for yourself. Don't rely on somebody else's interpretation, especially in this critical time of accurate and transparent communication, because that's essential. So at this time, um, I would like to, number one, thank uh, Deb Wolf and Kevin for you know, stepping up and taking the leadership uh, for this effort. Um, and I'd like to ask Deb to come forward and kind of outline where we are today, what we've accomplished over the last few days, and what we have in store for us over the next uh, several months. So Dean Wolf. And then following, uh, following um, Deb's uh, comments, uh, we will open it up to question and answers. And Kevin's here, and Dr. Conrad, and Deb and myself will be uh, very happy to answer your questions or try to answer them. Okay? Thank you, Deb. Okay. I'm much comfortable in front of the podium. So, oh, can you hear me now? Okay. Sorry. Much more comfortable in front of the podium than behind it. Okay. Here. Oh, I got it. It's going to take me a little bit. I am not going to talk long here because I know you have questions. What I, I just want to give you a theme is, is since uh, I was appointed to this and with Kevin, I think he'd probably agree with this, it has been cooperation and collaboration. I am amazed of the people that have stepped up and have done some work. And I think if you go on to the new website on the front page, you're going to see what we're producing and how we're working together. That is so important. But people you're not even aware of that have done behind the scenes work for us, I really, really appreciate that. That is fantastic. And then being a co-chair with Kevin, it has, um, has helped the situation so much because I think we're both very linear thinkers and we're very into uh, organization. So uh, it's a good fit and I appreciate that. So uh, I wanna tell you, uh, kind of sum up what's happened in the last two and a half days. It has been a whirlwind of about nine hour days and we produced a document, a draft of a first document and we're gonna have it on the website by the end of the week so you'll all have access to it. And we've made some project decisions. One of the, oh, and the document is the, um, is the San Luis Obispo Community College District Integrated Planning Manual. And it's a wonderful document and it's going to drive where we're going all the way in the future. And it's something that we didn't have and we should have had. And we have a lot of processes. We have a lot of things that we've, we've implemented. We have incredible planning at this institution. Actually, we over plan and we make things very complicated. But it's going to drive us where we're going in the future. And it doesn't matter what administrator walks in. If we get a new president, sorry, Dr. Stork, or anyone, any, any, any new administrator, it is, sets the process for the institution. So, and it should make everyone feel really comfortable to uh, see that we are moving forward no matter how long it takes. So that is one thing that we produced and we're very, very excited about it and a lot of hands are on it. A cabinet's hands were on it, the accreditation steering committee's hands were on it, the core group's hands were on it, and again, your hands will be on it because you can comment on it once we get that draft out there. Second thing that we did is we decided that we're going to do an addendum to the educational master plan. And we are going to pull everyone together and Dr. Stork is going to facilitate this along with Kevin and I working with him. And we are going to look at our data, both internally and externally, and look at our challenges. What are our challenges? And then we're going to set goals from that. And that is going to drive the institution, those institutional goals. So we are going to have in mid-March an open forum. You are all, or an open joint meeting of everyone. You're all invited. I would give you the date, but all of a sudden it's changed in the last meeting. So, but we will put it on the website. We will notify the community. 
in the internal community and the external community. And then we will have our goals. Then from there, at the end of March, we are going to have a, we're going to tweak our strategic plan. We need some adjustments to that. And so we're going to bring Eva back to help facilitate that. And at the beginning of that, we're going to, again, look at our educational, our institutional goals, so everyone has some input. And then we're going to work on our institutional objectives. I got it. <laughs> we have a new language. Thank you for the help. Obviously, I'm having time. We have new language. We have to learn the new terminology and how we use it at the institution. And I'm learning it also. So we're going to uh, do that, and then we'll move with the other plans. While this is happening, we're also going to be working on Rec 7 and Rec 6. And we're, uh, we will keep the timeline out there for you. We're going to publish that on the website so you're aware of that. So I think that's a sum of, you know, two and a half days that were action-packed, but we did produce, which is fantastic, and we have a plan, which is even better. So I think that's about all I have to say. Uh, just a thank you to everyone. You've been amazing, and I really appreciate that. So Kevin's going to be available for questions. Dr. Stork, anybody have any questions? I'll be glad to help. Oh, Julie. I was just wondering how the um, educational master plan core principles are going to feed into the new goals and then into the new, let's see, was it goals, actions, and I'm not getting the language either, but we used to have core principles. What, what are, where are those going to go? Yeah, well, the, if you recall, when the uh, Educational Master Plan Task Force was working on that project, uh, <clears throat> when, those, when those ideas came forward, they were called themes, and then they were changed to core principles. Well, they're still themes. And so there are some wonderful themes that came out of that, but they're, they don't lead us anywhere. They're just nice things that we want to keep in mind that as we continue to identify where our real challenges are, that we don't lose sight of the fact that these are important themes for us. But they may not be the most important things that we need to focus the energy and the resources of the college over the life of the educational master plan. So what was missing was the analysis of the data that was in the plan to be able to identify the challenges, and then from the challenges identify the most important institutional goals that we need to focus on over the life of the educational master plan. So they won't go away. We just will couch them and describe them a little differently, and, but we will focus on, on the, uh, the, direct, or the, you know, the direct focus of the educational master plan. So that's where that's the transition piece. And so we're not going to rewrite the educational master plan, but we are going to provide an addendum to it uh, so we can address those two gaps. And the addendum is only going to be about a five-page addendum. Mm -hmm. All right. Janice. So there are numerous operational plans that are kind of tied to the <clears throat> educational master plan that we're now enhancing the objectives? No, those are goals. Those, those goals. So, and some of the plans are done. Some of them are almost done or in process. How does this change affect those? Well, we will continue to finish the plans that are not finished. But, uh, and we won't tamper with the operational plans until we decide what the institutional goals are and what the objectives are of the strategic plan, and then we will tweak the operational plans so that their, their tasks feed into and support the objectives of the educational master plan. You only allow one question. <laughs> yeah, you'll see in the planning document there, there are There'll be timelines established for when that process will happen. But we're, we have to kind of not necessarily undo, but we have to reshape some of the directions of the operational plan so that they do, in fact, we have only one focus, and that's to deliver on the institutional goals and the objectives. And yes, there will be some ongoing work that these operational plans 
will continue to do, but we won't have separate agendas in terms of the direction of the plans. They must all feed into the uh, objectives and the goals of the college. Otherwise, we're going to be in this continual shotgun approach to allocating our resources. And that'll be a major change and shift for the focus of our attention. Okay. Hi, how are you doing? Am I on? Yes. Okay. I have a group of students here, and a lot of the language you're using is probably inaccessible. Yeah. And it also sounds like we're talking about documents, and I know that it's more than documents. So um, what are we doing beyond writing documents? Well, you know, that's, that's exactly what we learned from both John Nixon and also from Dr. Conrad was, you know, the, 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 um, the accreditation standards are all about process and not necessarily about things. And, and, and where we were going was developing the things, you know, the technology plan or the enrollment management plan and so on, which are important, but they are not the end of all. It's the process that ties it all together that's sustainable over time. And then part of what our, our manual, our planning manual will do is help us redefine kind of the words we're using and where we need to be focusing our attention. We don't have to have operational plans. There's nowhere in the standards are those identified. But we do have to have a planning process. And so it's not bad to have opera or operational plans, but they are not the end all. And that was part of what, what we found was happening, is that they were operating in silos and not connected. And it's the process that we re really need to focus on now. So it will be a real shift for our thinking. Yeah, I'm not sure where that is now in terms of in the system. We, I mean, the new drive we just looked, I mean, the new f diagram we looked at in that packet, yeah. It, it will be on the uh, website, so the first draft will be. Yeah, when that's, uh, that's, that's a good uh, um, observation, uh, Allison, and I, you know, most of us just saw it for the first time today or yesterday, so it's really not... It's not located anywhere right now, but um, but as uh, Deb mentioned, uh, a new website has been created for the accreditation. If you go on the home page, uh, Quest College home page, and click on accreditation, you'll see the new site, and you also see weekly updates given from the accreditation steering committee. And as soon as the um, the draft of the uh, of the planning manual is ready to to go, and I think you said by next week, or okay. by the end of this week? By the end of the week. We'll it'll also be posted, and then we encourage you to go in and start looking at that and getting familiar with the structure of it, and the model will be in, in the, the visual model of that will also be included. Can I say, say something back here for your question and for the students? It is writing down your processes. That's what we haven't done. We haven't written our processes where people have access to it, and we haven't written timelines that we have to stick to. And that has been our issue, mm -hmm. one of our issues. And assessment, assessment. We need to write down how we assess. Um, Deb, I actually had a question for you. You had said that you and a few others are going to be looking at institutional data and from that kind of reassessing what other institutions are going to do within the college, what sort of data are you going to be looking at? Is it more of like a student success, faculty success, or just an overall planning or something like that? I'm just kind of confused. I'm sorry I confused you. Uh, so we have, if you look in the educational master plan, we have all these, all these graphs and charts. It's amazing. We know where the students are coming in from the high schools. We know... Uh, you know, how our demographics have changed. We, there's a lot of internal, how many students graduate? How many get certificates? We have all this data, but we never analyzed and summarized. 
where are our challenges? We're having serious challenges. And so it's not just a couple of us looking. You're invited. Everybody's invited to look. We're going to analyze that data, and then we're going to set our goals after we've analyzed it. Looked at our challenges, and then set our goals. Kevin, do you want to say something? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, all right. Eileen. Well, I've been looking at some of these documents now that um, they've been drawn to our attention. And Deb, you mentioned the strategic um, plan. It's making some changes in there. Um, what what changes were you guys thinking of? Um, and also, um, when we had that SWOT analysis in 2010, that's in the back of the strategic plan, and it seems kind of raw, like it should be a little bit better organized, but it should outline some of our challenges, but maybe they've changed. Okay, the institutional, institutional objectives that are coming out of the strategic plan, they have to be measurable. That's the most important thing. But they're going to be built off of the institutional goals from the educational master plan, and that's the addendum we're adding. We didn't do that. We don't have education, I mean, institutional goals. And so that's why we have to get that addendum to the educational master plan. And then from those goals that are really uh, addressing our challenges, then we will set up our institutional, um, institutional objectives. Thank you. Yeah, Eileen, let me add to that. You know, if you recall, um, in the uh, recommendations made from the 2008 as a result of the 2008 comprehensive plan, one of the, the recommendations, too, said the college needed to complete its strategic plan. Well, the college focused on that, thinking that that was, you know, a, a crucial ingredient that we needed to do. And this was also came at the tail end of the last revision of the educational master plan. So since we didn't have a current educational master plan, the consultants that we brought in said, well, we need, we're going to do this a little backwards. You know, this is not going to be a, a traditional strategic plan. It's going to be an action plan to get some things in motion and get things done. So the strategic plan really ended up, as if you look at strategic goal two, was really a plan to complete all of these operational plans the, and master plans, you know, educational master plan, facilities plan, and then all the operational plans. Until that educational master plan was completed, um, we really couldn't develop an action, a normal strategic plan, which really sets the objectives to satisfy the institutional goals. So we are now modifying the current, we will be modifying the concurrent uh, strategic plan once the college is establishes the institutional goals, so it becomes the, the engine that drives and uh, implements and satisfies those, it works on those institutional goals. So it's kind of rewriting the ship in terms of the order in which, and the model that you'll see in the uh, planning manual really clarifies that, that everything is driven from the mission of the college to the educational master plan, and then everything comes off of that document. It is, exactly. Mm -hmm. any, other any other questions? We, we have a few in, from the North County. Oh, okay. We'll take one in the North County. Um, Deb, your explanation of how the strategic plan is connected to the educational master plan is a lot clearer now. And from the work that we did on the strategic plan, we did have objectives with people who were in charge of meeting those objectives. Mm -hmm. So have any, since we've had that document now for what, over a year? Mm -hmm. Am I right? Yes. yes. Have any of those objectives been met? And if so, can we, as members of this college, be able to easily identify how and in what way those objectives have been met? Excellent, Excellent question, question, Stacey. Hi, Stacey. Uh, we are going to do a progress report. And that's a part, we're going to have so many progress reports, but we are going to do a progress report. The whole call, it will be published. The whole college will know where we are. And remember, we're not throwing away the strategic plan. We're just tweaking the strategic plan. That's all we're doing to make sure we're doing what we're supposed to be doing, and we do have measurable. There, um, 
a lot of them are a little more looser than what we needed, Stacy, on that one. And I think Dr. Stork uh, did a really good job of answering that prior. So does that answer your question? Not exactly. So have any of the objectives, so you mentioned a progress report. When does the progress report happen? Uh, well, we've already started working on that. But what we're trying to do is we're going to define a template so that we have a standardized, but we've already been working. We did look at the objectives um, last year and actually in December, and we, uh, we did not publish it, and we should, and I'm trying to get that up on the website. Um, I made some inquiries about where that information was. We'll put up there of what we have accomplished so far, and then uh, we will continue to update that as we go forward. Let but me it will add be to a that. progress report. Let me add to that. Stacey, uh, probably <clears throat> because we haven't had a real clean, identifiable website for this information, we actually, over the first year and a half, we actually published a monthly progress report on the goal attainment and the action step attainment on the strategic plan. And that was produced out of my office. Um, Lisa would canvas all the, the stakeholders, give the information, and publish the updated plan. Uh, what we discovered is it was hard to find. It was, in, it was off of my website, the president's website, um, and not everybody knew how to get there. Um, but it was not ignored. And so it is, I'm not sure where it's located anymore, uh, but it's still, if you find the, the link to the strategic plan update, you'll see that progress. And I don't know, Lisa or Todd, where those are now, do you know? We're, gonna, we're going to, it doesn't matter where they are. Yeah. We're going to clean it up and everything will be yeah. on the accreditation planning website. I would think that would be a critical piece of part of the process is knowing what has been accomplished. Yes. So there aren't as many questions about we know that we have X number of goals. We know that we have X number of objectives. But what's being done to meet those objectives, I think, is at least for me, just speaking for myself, that's the real vague part that I don't know. And that's part of the process is identifying what's being accomplished. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Linda? I think that uh, when Stacy and others are able to go to that website, they will see that the monthly responses and the updates that were made were very complete. And in, in many of the areas, there were action steps that were completed. There are action steps that are in progress. And all of the activities that happened under those action steps are listed in chronological order. So um, I think she will be probably pleasantly surprised that there's more work been done under those uh, strategic goals than one would believe. Yeah, and I think Stacy's point mostly here is that people weren't aware of it, and they didn't have clear access to it. And, um, and, and therefore, if you don't have access and it's not clear, then you wonder if anything's being done at all. And we want to we minimize that completely so that that everyone in this room and everyone connected to the college can feel confident they can go to one source and check in and, and be confident uh, about what's happening. And if you don't see things happening, then you have a basis of concern that you can express in the appropriate uh, chain of who's responsible. Mm -hmm. Now, Amy? I just had a question regarding the board goals and how those fit into the institutional goals. We haven't, we haven't crossed that path yet. I do want it's a to good question, though. If you look at the standards and if you look, the board goals have their own goals, what they're supposed to be doing. And so it doesn't, it, uh, our board goals were bit, built off of the educational master plan, the current educational master plan. And, uh, you know, they have their own responsibilities. We're looking at the institution and how the institution has to function. And the only reason I, I was asking is because I recall when I arrived in 2009, we used to use those board goals in our planning documents, and so I just wanted to know how that all fits into what we're doing now. That's because we didn't have institutional goals. So it'll be another shift in the way in which we direct the planning process for you as a program manager and which you put into your, your IPPR work. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'd like Eva to talk. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Karina. <laughs> I have talked so much in the last few days, let me tell you. 
Um, when Dr. Stork asked me to come and lend a hand, the first thing I did is look at all of your self-studies and the companion pieces to your self-studies, which are the team evaluation reports and the action letters. And what was clear to me right away, and part of why I said yes, even though he is my friend, I did have to think about it, um, is your passion. What was clear is how much work you've done. What was clear is that you have a willingness to have an institutional, at this level, planning process that's going to guide the college toward better and better and better student achievement. There were just some missing pieces, such as the one you're talking about. There were some gaps, and that's what the Accrediting Commission has been saying since 2002, the first time the college was asked to refine their planning process was 2002. They've been very patient, uh, and that's part of the reason for the seriousness of this sanction. And I'm very confident that when the team comes back in October, that they're going to be really impressed with how much you've gotten done in a short time. Do you want me to say anything else? I don't know how to sing. I'm sorry. <laughs> Other questions, comments? Well, thank you. And again, thank you for, you know, your, your, the evidence for me, since we're now in this new world, everything is evidence-based. The evidence for me is that you really deeply care about, you know, what happens to Cuesta College and what happens to your college. Um, and what role can you play in assisting us to move forward as an institution? Because what we create today is what we will live by and our successors will live by as we come and go and maybe come back once in a while. Um, will continue to uh, work towards. And, um, and that's really, you know, this is the legacy for Cuesta College, is the creation of our planning process so that generations and groups beyond will have something to plug into and refine, because the process is about refinement and assessment and, and making it relevant to the time frame and the, and the conditions under which the college finds itself at any given particular time. So, so I want to thank you very much for being here and, um, and look for, go on the, on the uh, Quest College homepage and click on accreditation and start um, educating yourself as to what the documents are, where you can find the updates. Uh, Deb's going to be producing, you know, a weekly update on the activities of, of what the Accreditation Steering Committee and the Brainstorming Group and other uh, work groups are doing uh, throughout the, this uh, spring semester and beyond. So, again, thanks for being here today, and uh, we'll keep you informed. Thank you very much. <laughs>